Hi, I'm uh, Choi Huang from the Cath Lab at Frederick Health Hospital. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, this year again to Suburban on your uh, Interventional Skills Day. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, today about the uh, duration of uh, dual antiplatelet therapy and specifically about the ever-shrinking duration of DAPT after PCI. Um, I have uh, no disclosures. The uh, most recent uh, formal guidelines uh, for duration of DAPT uh, date from 2016, uh, but in 2021, uh, there were some updates in the clinical practice guidelines uh, for uh, coronary artery uh, revascularization. So what do the guidelines say? Well, for antiplatelet therapy during PCI, uh, it's uh, fairly standard. All patients undergoing PCI should get loaded with aspirin and a P2Y12 inhibitor. For a stable CAD, uh, loading with uh, clopidogrel is the uh, class one recommendation. Uh, for ACS, uh, loading with uh, tecagrelor or prazogrel is reasonable, and that's uh, what we do in our daily practice. For the right patient, uh, ISR REACT-5, uh, which was a head-to-head uh, -head comparison between tecagrelor and prazogrel for PCI in ACS, uh, suggested that prazogrel might be better, actually, than tecagrelor in terms of reducing death MI or stroke, and it did not cause uh, excess bleeding. However, in the patients with uh, history of stroke or TIA, uh, prazogrel uh, should not be used. Uh, what about duration of DAPT after PCI? Well, in a nutshell, uh, after PCI for ACS, uh, the 2016 guidelines uh, told us to uh, continue DAPT for 12 months uh, for most patients. Uh, if a patient is at high bleeding risk, uh, then the p 2 l 12 inhibitor uh, can be stopped at six months. And if there is low bleeding risk, it may be reasonable to continue DAPT uh, beyond 12 months for uh, certain patients. The uh, 2021 guidelines uh, add uh, this additional category shown in green. Uh, there is now uh, substantial data that show that for most ACS patients, it is reasonable uh, to stop aspirin at one to three months and uh, continue P2Y12 inhibitor uh, just monotherapy. The uh, 2021 changes are uh, similar uh, for stable ischemic heart disease. Uh, the 2016 guidelines uh, recommended six months of DAP for most patients, uh, three months for high bleeding risk patients, and greater than six months uh, for uh, certain patients with low bleeding risks. Uh, this, uh, these uh, really have not changed. Um, as with ACS patients, the uh, 2021 guidelines for stable CAD added the uh, new category of uh, one to three months of DAPT, uh, dropping aspirin, and continuing with P2Y12 inhibitor uh, monotherapy. So uh, where uh, do uh, these uh, new recommendations uh, come from? Well, one of the uh, largest trials to look at shortening DAPT was uh, Twilight. Uh, this was a trial that uh, we were actually uh, involved in. Uh, in twilight, uh, patients uh, were on aspirin and ticagrelor for three months and then randomized to either ticagrelor plus placebo or to continue aspirin and ticagrelor for up to 12 months. Uh, the trial included uh, high-risk patients, uh, by which uh, they met either uh, with uh, high clinical risk or more, uh, or, uh, more complex uh, coronary anatomy. So what they saw was that uh, three months of DAPT uh, followed by ticagrelor alone uh, led to significantly less bleeding and was non-inferior uh, for all-cause uh, mortality, MI, and stroke. And importantly, there was no difference in uh, stent thrombosis uh, at uh, one year. Okay, so what if we don't mandate the use of ticagrelor as the uh, P2Y12 inhibitor? Well, that's what they did in Smart Choice. Uh, this was an open label trial, and patients were on DAPT uh, for three months, uh, followed by either a P2Y12 inhibitor alone or uh, continued DAPT for up to 12 months. Uh, in this trial, uh, about three quarters of the patients were on uh, clopidogrel, and the uh, remainder were on either uh, tecagrelor or prazogrel. And as in Twilight, uh, three months of DAPT uh, led to less bleeding and was non-inferior for uh, all-cause mortality, MI, and stroke, and there was also no difference uh, in uh, stent uh, thrombosis. So if uh, three months of DAPT is sufficient, what about just one month? 
Well, this is what global leaders looked at. Uh, this was a uh, quite ambitious uh, uh, European open label trial, uh, which enrolled nearly 16,000 patients. And in this trial, all patients received uh, aspirin and ticagrelor for one month and were then randomized to uh, ticagrelor alone for up to 24 months or aspirin plus ticagrelor for up to one year, uh, followed by uh, aspirin alone. The uh, one quirk here is that all patients received uh, PCI uh, with a drug loading stent with a uh, biodegradable polymer coating. And in this trial, uh, they found that uh, while there was a trend, uh, one month of DAPT was not superior to 12 months of DAPT in terms of uh, all-cause mortality at uh, two years. And like the three-month DAP trials, there was also no difference in uh, MI revascularization or stent thrombosis. However, uh, surprisingly and maybe a little bit disappointingly, uh, there was also no difference in bleeding, uh, including BARC 3 or 5 uh, major bleeding. So no benefit for short DAP uh, here, but uh, it doesn't uh, seem uh, to hurt. Okay, so instead of using uh, biodegradable uh, polymer DES, uh, which are really no longer in favor in the United States, let's just use uh, contemporary DES. Uh, this is what uh, Ultimate DAP did, and this trial was just published uh, in the Lancet uh, earlier this year. This was a randomized uh, placebo control study of uh, ACS patients, mostly in China and in Pakistan. Uh, and over uh, 3,500 patients were randomized to 12 months of aspirin plus uh, ticagrelor or uh, one month of aspirin plus ticagrelor followed by 11 months of placebo uh, plus ticagrelor. And in, in this study, uh, they found significantly less uh, clinically relevant bleeding in the one month DAP group uh, with the curves separating very early on uh, within just a few days of uh, PCI. And importantly, uh, there was no difference in MACE and the uh, stent thrombosis rate was identical. Uh, there was uh, a separate analysis in this trial of the use of IVIS, which was uh, published separately. And in a nutshell, they also found that for ACS patients, uh, IVIS-guided PCI with DES resulted in uh, lower MACE uh, uh, compared to uh, just in geography-guided uh, uh, PCI. All right, well, so what if instead of ticagrelor as monotherapy, we use clopidogrel instead? Uh, so remember in Plato, the uh, ticagrelor group had more uh, non-procedure related bleeding compared to uh, clopidogrel. Well, so that's what they did in stop DAP2. Uh, this was another open label trial where uh, patients were randomized to either 12 months of aspirin uh, plus uh, clopidogrel or one month of DAP followed by clopidogrel alone for up to one year. So in the one month group, patients could uh, at the physician's discretion be either on uh, clopidogrel or a low dose of prazogrel, uh, 3.75 milligram, uh, which is actually not a typical dose I've, I've ever seen in the United States. And they, they found that uh, one month of DAPT resulted in significantly less bleeding, again, with the caveat of the, uh, uh, at least for this country, the unusually low dose of uh, prazogrel. And one month of DAPT was uh, non-inferior for MACE, and uh, as with the other uh, short DAP trials, uh, there was uh, no difference uh, in uh, stent thrombosis. Well, okay, so what if now, instead of using uh, P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy, we just went to aspirin uh, after one month of DAPT? Well, I'm not aware of uh, any uh, randomized clinical trial data for this question, but there are a couple of interesting uh, single arm studies. Uh, one was the uh, Onyx-1 study uh, using the uh, Resolute Onyx stent, and the other is the uh, Zions-28 uh, study uh, using the uh, Zions uh, DES. So in, in Zions-28, uh, patients with uh, high bleeding risk uh, received DAPT uh, for just one month, uh, followed by aspirin alone for up to six months. And the uh, results were uh, propensity matched uh, against historical controls uh, who uh, received DAPT uh, for six months. And in Zions 28, uh, one month of DAPT uh, resulted in less major bleeding and was non-inferior uh, for death or MI. And reassuringly, uh, there was also no difference in stent thrombosis. And the results for uh, Onyx 1 were fairly similar. And, and honestly, these studies have 
to some extent, uh, relegated uh, bare metal stents, uh, at least uh, at our institutions, uh, to uh, to the history books. I don't even think we carry uh, BMS anymore. Okay, so in, if one month is okay, what about just a couple of weeks? Well, uh, this is what they did in uh, TPAS. Uh, this was a uh, Korean uh, open label study uh, that was uh, published in circulation in um, this year, in 2024, in which uh, patients uh, received uh, aspirin anticoagulor for a median of just 16 days uh, before being randomized to either uh, ticagrelor alone or aspirin plus ticagrelor for up to 12 months. And, and not surprisingly, there was less bleeding in the less than one month ADAPT group. And uh, surprisingly, they reported that less than one month of ADAPT was actually superior for MACE, uh, but that was uh, primarily driven by differences in major bleeding. Uh, when looking at death MI and stroke, the groups uh, were the same. And importantly, there was also no difference in uh, stent thrombosis. So let's take this a, a step further. If a couple of weeks of DAP might be sufficient, what about just no DAP, no DAP at all? Well, uh, this is what uh, Stop DAP 3 looked at uh, in this uh, open label trial as well uh, that was published also in circulation earlier this year. Uh, patients were randomized to either prazoril or aspirin plus prazoril immediately after PCI. And they found no significant uh, difference in bleeding at one month between the two groups. But more ominously, uh, there was a significantly higher rate of stent thrombosis and unplanned uh, revascularization in the no dapt group. But uh, somewhat uh, disappointing, uh, uh, disappointing to me, uh, they did use uh, the very low 3.75 milligram dose of prazogrel, uh, which is uh, really not used in this country. And obviously that could have contributed to the higher rate of stent thrombosis and unplanned revascularization rate. So, but my, my, my take from this is that there is probably a minimum duration of DAP that is needed uh, after uh, PCI. So what about uh, complex PCI? I mean, surely with multi-vessel stenting and complex PCI, there would be a disadvantage to using shorter DAP, right? Well, a, a recent meta-analysis of five trials uh, involving nearly 23,000 patients uh, tried to address uh, this uh, question. Uh, here, they looked at the subset of patients with complex PCI, including CTOs, uh, bifurcations, uh, long stented segments, multiple stents, multiple vessels, and patients were on DAP for three months after PCI, followed by either a P2Y12 inhibitor alone or continued DAP uh, for up to 12 months. And, and really surprising to me, at least, uh, short DAP did well uh, for both complex and non-complex PCI. So for both complex and non-complex PCI, shorter DAP resulted in less bleeding and without additional risk of fatal or ischemic events. There was also no difference in definite or probable stent thrombosis. So these authors concluded that uh, collectively, uh, their findings challenge the central role of DAPT beyond one to three months and support a practice shift toward early initiation of monotherapy with a P2Y12 inhibitor uh, after PCI, irrespective of uh, procedure uh, complexity. So given all of this, are there any situations where you might actually benefit uh, from longer DAPT? Well, for that, we reach back to the old uh, DAPT study from 2014, uh, which showed that 30 months of DAPT uh, significantly reduced uh, stent thrombosis and MACE compared to 12 months of DAPT but at a cost of uh, increased uh, risk of bleeding. So based on this study, uh, Robert Ye and his colleagues developed a, the DAPT score in 2016 to help identify patients for whom DAPT up to 30 months uh, might be reasonable. Uh, some of these factors are intuitive, uh, SVG, uh, PCI, longer stents, and NMI, uh, intuitively increase the risk of uh, uh, thrombosis and favor longer DAPT. Older age uh, increases uh, the risk of bleeding and favors uh, shorter DAPT. So in essence, if your DAPT score is greater than or equal to two, uh, prolonged DAPT up to 30 months uh, might be reasonable. On the other hand, if your DAPT score is less than two, then prolonged DAPT is not recommended. Uh, one big caveat though, the DAPT study uh, included many patients who received 
the uh, first uh, generation of stents, uh, Cypher and Taxus, which as we all know are more prone to stent thrombosis than the latest generation of stents. So it's not clear to me how well uh, this study uh, actually applies uh, to uh, the modern uh, era. All right, so, so where does this all leave us? Well, in my mind, it has always been the balance of ischemic risk versus bleeding risk that uh, determines the uh, duration of DAPT. So while uh, current uh, guidelines haven't uh, completely caught up to the data yet, my sense is that we are starting to shift uh, to an era where PCI is followed by a very short period of DAPT, perhaps just one month, followed by monotherapy uh, with a uh, P2Y12 inhibitor. Uh, Deepak Bhatt put out this uh, very uh, nice flowchart in Jack, which I uh, flagrantly copied here and modified a little bit. If the uh, bleeding risk is high, uh, then one month of DAP followed by clopidogrel monotherapy is well supported. There is also non-randomized data that supports the safety of aspirin uh, after uh, one month of DAP. Uh, if the ischemic risk is high, then the traditional 12 months of DAP is reasonable. And if the ischemic risk is very high and bleeding risk is low, uh, then continuing up to 30 months uh, might be reasonable. And if you are somewhere in the middle, uh, then three months of DAPT uh, followed by ticagrelor monotherapy uh, is uh, well supported. Thank you for watching.